Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Garrett Haig, NBC News Justice and Intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian, and The Washington Post senior national political correspondent and MSNBC political analyst Ashley Parker. All right, so Garrett, I'm going to begin with you. The order of these choices strikes me. Can we say that these three things will be his top priorities for his administration? We're talking about deportations, deregulation, and hardline positions on Iran and China. Yeah, look, I think these choices very much point in that direction, Katie, particularly the sort of national security positions, Marco Rubio, Mike Waltz, and also Tom Homan coming back in this uh, border czar role where he will essentially uh, report directly to Donald Trump. Uh, these are priorities that Trump laid out on the trail, and I think they wanted to make very clear from the outset that their priorities they're going to follow through on. Beyond that, I frankly wouldn't read too much into the order itself. To borrow a phrase from Nancy Pelosi in these situations, sometimes there are guys who need jobs and jobs that need guys. And in the case of someone like Lee Zeldin or Lee Stefanik, these were people who were very loyal to Trump for a long time, who needed to f be found positions within this administration. I don't know that it was necessarily that they needed to announce these things right away to send a specific message. You don't think that announcing the very first big announcement, Garrett, just to push back a little, on it, the border czar was meant to send a signal that I, mass I deportations. I think the border czar was meant to send a yeah. signal. That's why I separate that out okay. from Stefanik and, and uh, Zeldin, who I think are more in the category of people who've been specifically loyal to Trump mm. over time. I think the border czar part of it is absolutely meant to send a message. I mean, Trump has talked about this as a day one priority. He said he doesn't need Congress. He thinks he can do it by executive order, essentially by fiat. And he's putting someone at his right hand who he believes can help him do that. Gary, what about Senator Ruby? Interesting, because he's a pick that uh, Democrats are, are so far signaling that they're okay with, someone they think that they can work with. Um, he's also somebody who's been pretty tough on, at least on messaging, toward Russia. Makes, make, the, make the case for Marco Rubio as Secretary of State for Donald Trump. Yeah, look, I mean, Marco Rubio has been a senator for 14 years. He's the ranking member of the Intelligence Committee. He's privy to our nation's most closely guarded secrets in that role. And I think he's seen as a serious player on foreign policy by Democrats and by Republicans alike. You may not like his politics. Democrats may not be happy with his politics. But this, you know, ultimately, Donald Trump needs a secretary of state. And within the foreign policy establishment in Washington, the reasoning has been that Donald Trump or that Marco Rubio is someone who understands the rules of the game, knows who the players are and is kind of a serious enough operator that he's not going to go out there and embarrass himself if he has to, you know, move too far in one direction towards Donald Trump to, to please the boss. And so I think, uh, you know, kind of given the the Venn diagram and the overlap in the Venn diagram between the parties and what we agree on are national security priorities. Rubio is a choice that I think will help a lot of folks who didn't vote for Donald Trump sleep better at night about having him at the till. Ashley, what about Mike Walls? He's not somebody that's super well known outside of Fox News. No, but he's somebody who, like a lot of these picks, um, is incredibly close and loyal to Trump. He is someone we started hearing about as a close Trump ally and saw defending Trump on a lot of his positions uh, throughout the course of this campaign. And he also shares, and again, this is what Trump wants this time, someone who very clearly shares his worldview, um, tough on China, and uh, Walls shares his worldview. He had a convention speaking spot also at um, he also frequently got uh, confused with Tim Walls. That's neither here nor there. But again, shares his worldview on a number of these uh, important big policy issues, uh, a vocal defender. And so it's not surprising that someone like that, who kind of checks both boxes, the personal loyalty and acolyte, and also a shared world vision, uh, would emerge as a top person in Trump's administration. Um, all right, let's talk about immigration a little bit more. Governor Nome Garrett, um, she's not necessarily somebody who has a deep well of immigration experience. Why Governor Nome, who is not from a border state, uh, to lead DHS? Are you putting her in line with the, the Lee Zeldins and the Elise Stefanics? Yeah, that feels more like the guys who need jobs than the jobs who need guys category here. I mean, Noam has been a strong supporter of Donald Trump. She's someone who's been uh, an acolyte of his, to borrow from Ashley, and has been out there on the trail for him. Um, I think also with the immigration responsibility apparently largely going to be centralized out of the White House with Homan and Stephen Miller working on that, it's possible that she could have less of a policy role than other DHS secretaries might. But also note that she has not been formally announced 
announced yet by the campaign. Um, and so I'm curious to see what the rationale is once they decide to start defending that choice more publicly. Is it, going to, is it going to be a problem, Ashley, to defend the choice of Christy Nome? She was floated for a little while as potentially a VP pick, maybe, but then there was that book, her memoir that came out where she talked about having to shoot her own dog. Right. That, that essentially killed her chances right there. Trump is not a huge fan of dogs, actually, but even he knew that he had a political problem on his hands with that. Um, but to, to defend that choice, again, just to sort of level set, this is a this is a Senate, for instance, where he has some margin for error. And while she's not necessarily the most conventional choice, uh, for the obvious reasons, not a border state, no particular experience uh, in this area, she is someone who has made clear she will do what he wants her to do. And, and that's important to him in this role. So, again, he is going to be able to push through more of his important priorities, especially with a little wiggle room in a Republican-controlled Senate um, and likely uh, or potentially a Republican House, although that obviously doesn't matter for the confirmation. Yeah. What about um, the CIA and the FBI, Ken? So far, we haven't gotten any names for those roles, but you're reporting that the FBI is preparing for some big changes. Yeah, that's right, Katie. Sources tell us that both Chris Ray's team and the Trump team are preparing for the likelihood that Ray will be replaced as FBI director. Whether Trump fires him or just signals that he should leave and then he resigns is unclear. Uh, but look, Chris Ray's FBI, let's not forget, served, served that search warrant on Mar-a-Lago, barged in there and took those documents. So, I mean, no agency has drawn more criticism, savage criticism from Donald Trump over the years than the FBI. Not necessarily Chris Ray in particular. Donald Trump hired him. He's a Republican, although he has criticized him. But there does seem to be a consensus that Trump wants to replace him uh, as FBI director. And, you know, we've heard names that run the gamut from bomb thrower Cash Patel to mainstream Republican Mike Rogers. That's a huge gap. And depending on who gets that job, I think it'll send a big signal about in what direction uh, the Trump administration is going in terms of law enforcement. Also a big signal to the rank and, rank and file of the FBI about how they're going to operate. Let me ask you about the DOJ. Uh, what names are being floated for attorney general? What about this Mark Paletta guy? Yeah, Mark Paoletta has been out there almost campaigning for the job. And the reason that a lot of people inside DOJ are very nervous about him is that he has been articulating uh, the, the shattering of a five-decade post-Watergate norm. He's saying that the president should be able to order specific investigations into specific people in the context of Donald Trump saying he's going to investigate and prosecute his enemies. Take a listen to Paoletta. Only in the federal government, only with a deep swamp, do people, you know, career employees think that they get to run the, the joint, as it were. Um, you know, President Trump, you know, was reelected with an overwhelming majority of an agenda by the American people popularly supported. So deporting millions of illegal aliens uh, out of this country, securing the border, um, banning DEI, all that destructive stuff that the Biden administration let run wild getting boys out of girls' sports. Those are all the things that the Department of Justice is going to work on, and those are the things that the Department of, of Justice employees, career employees, are going to support. And if they don't want to support it, they should leave. And you know, Katie, uh, DOJ public servants are used to working for both Republican and Democratic presidents. They have no problem shifting policy on a dime. What they do have a problem with, though, is being ordered to investigate people without proper predication. If, they, if that happens, you will see uh, resignations.